Researchers have made a nuclear fusion breakthrough from the U.S. Department of Energy, and it seems like the world might have a chance at a better and cleaner future, after all. According to reports, researchers have been able to produce more energy from fusion reactions than they did to initiate the process for the first time ever in a laboratory. Not to mention, a total of 192 laser beams created approximately 150% more power than was put in. And while that's not all, let's look at the details of everything. The feat was accomplished at the $3.5 billion National Ignition Facility, or NIF, a laser facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, where the NIF has been unable to produce a fusion reaction that produces more energy than it uses for more than 10 years. However, on December 5th at midnight, something abruptly changed. The lasers were employed by the scientists to zap a tiny hydrogen fuel pellet at 1 in the morning local time. The energy from the lasers was 2.05 megajoules, and the energy from the pellet was around 3.15 megajoules. Which, of course, is a significant accomplishment that the fusion research community has been working on for more than 50 years. Thus, according to researchers, clean, safe power without greenhouse gas emissions could one day be produced by using fusion energy. However, independent scientists think that the goal is still decades away even after this announcement. On the other hand, according to Tony Rulston, a nuclear engineer at Cambridge University in the UK, who has conducted an economic analysis of fusion power, fusion is unlikely to play a significant part in power production before the 2060s or 2070s, barring an even greater breakthrough. That being said, fusion energy won't be developed anytime soon even for the Biden administration, as is quite evident. Who wants to reduce America's net greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050? However, this objective is necessary, according to experts, in order to prevent the worst effects of climate change. And of course, with good comes bad, and so there is quite a critique to this achievement after all. Although the results would be a crucial proof of concept, experts have emphasized that the technology is far, far from being a core of the energy landscape. To begin with, 0.4 megajoules is equivalent to 0.1 kilowatts, or roughly the energy needed to boil a kettle. So, the fact that we will need to increase the energy gain much further to make fusion a source of electricity is all the more reason to work a little harder on it, and more. Not to forget, before we can actually convert this into a power plant, we'll also need to figure out a means to duplicate the identical effect much more frequently and far less expensively. So, there's that. Moving on, Professor Justin Wark, a physics professor at the University of Oxford, has also expressed that while the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory could theoretically accomplish such a finding approximately once per day, a fusion power plant would need to do it 10 times every second. Another thing to note here is that the 500 megajoules of energy that was used to power the lasers themselves is not included in the reported positive energy gain, whereas the NIF was created for a scientific demonstration rather than as a power plant. According to the information that has been made public recently, the effectiveness of converting electrical energy to laser energy was not taken into account when designing it, so this is yet another critique. The NIF experiments show how the scientific process of ignition results in high fusion energy gain, but in order to turn this into a power plant, we need to develop simpler approaches to achieve these conditions, which will need to be more efficient and, most importantly, cheaper in order for inertial fusion to be realized as a fusion power source. So, if the latest findings are accurate, they surpass the facility's most recent significant achievement, which was reported just last year and stated that 70% of the laser energy used in the experiment had been converted to nuclear energy. But let's not get confused here, because when the word fusion appears in National Review, it most likely refers to either the opposition research firm Fusion GPS and the Russiagate allegations, or to fusionism, the effort to bring together libertarians and traditionalist conservatives to advance the cause of ordered liberty. But perhaps, just perhaps, the US Department of Energy has made a real discovery, the kind of scientific discovery that alters the course of history. Although this is only the first stage in a long process, it is still an important one, as this scientific discovery has amazing possibilities. On the other hand, the debate over how the United States and the rest of the world can create sufficient energy without emitting carbon emissions that would worsen climate change would essentially be put to rest, according to an article by Andrew Follett published here at NR a few months ago. And as fusion doesn't have the public relations issues that environmentalists have associated with conventional nuclear reactors, it would be a game changer. This is due to the fact that the procedure would produce almost no hazardous waste and wouldn't even need hazardous fuel. Additionally, operational fusion power would likely be so effective that it would permanently replace the majority of existing electricity generation methods, since it would be too inexpensive to meter. However, we are left with only one question now, and that is, could this entire process of nuclear fusion save us? Let's see. 
We know that the U.S. discovery comes as the world struggles with high energy costs and the urgency of switching quickly from fossil fuel use to prevent dangerously high average global temperatures. The government of President Joe Biden is further investing approximately $370 billion in new subsidies for low carbon energy through the Inflation Reduction Act in an effort to reduce emissions and triumph in the race for next generation clean technology simultaneously. Sources with knowledge of the results claimed that the fusion reaction at the U.S. government facility produced about 2.5 megajoules of energy, which was roughly 120% of the 2.1 megajoules of energy in the lasers. They added that the data was still being analyzed, but the data that has been revealed has the potential to provide us with a better future. Not to mention, Congressman Don Bayer, chair of the Bipartisan Fusion Energy Caucus, called the technology the holy grail of clean energy at the unveiling of a new White House fusion power strategy this year, saying it has the potential to lift more citizens of the world out of poverty than anything since the invention of fire. With that out of the way, it is also known that historically this research has been carried out by major public institutions like the Joint European Taurus in Oxford, but in recent years funding has also poured into private enterprises that promise to provide fusion power by the 2030s. According to the Fusion Industry Association, fusion companies raised $2.83 billion in investment in the 12 months leading up to the end of June, increasing the total private sector investment to date to approximately $4.9 billion. And while the success of the National Ignition Facility is a scientific triumph, no doubt, Yet it does not herald the coming of a fusion-powered utopia. History, on the other hand, implies that fusion power is unlikely to play a significant part in the energy system for years or decades, which is time the globe does not have in the fight against climate change. The most likely alternatives continue to be other, less unusual, immediately scalable sources of renewable energy, and they require urgently more investment from humanity. Similarly, fusion reactors function, at least in theory, by intensely heating hydrogen. A small amount of mass is lost when atoms combine to form helium under the proper circumstances. According to the famous equation E equals mc squared, which was developed by Albert Einstein, that mass is converted into enormous amounts of energy. However, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to heat hydrogen sufficiently. For many years, researchers have worked to create a fusion reaction that produces more energy than it consumes. Optimism and investment spiked frequently, especially in the 1970s and 80s, but the outcomes were underwhelming. Another difficulty is producing power from the fusion reaction's energy. Much of the heat generated will, like in traditional power plants, dissipate ineffectively as opposed to being transferred to the water that creates steam to turn a turbine. This thus implies that an efficient fusion reactor would need to produce far more energy in order to generate enough electricity to cover the cost of ignition. However, other fusion power alternatives exist that do not rely on massive lasers. A new strategy is being used to construct a massive donut-shaped reactor in the south of France that could result in a sustainable fusion reaction by the year 2035. On the contrary, fusion reactors will have to outperform conventional fission plants and more affordable renewable energy sources. The various advantages of fusion will likely make the technology a significant component of the world's energy mix in the long term. But to replace the fossil fuels that are responsible for climate change, a shift that experts say should take place throughout the first half of the century, fusion will likely need to reach that point sooner rather than later. The strategy for that shift though, which is likely to rely on more well-known and more affordable sustainable energy sources, hasn't changed much over the years. So there isn't much to hope here anyway. Honestly, government and private investors must not lose sight of the urgent challenge that mankind is currently facing even as fusion physics develops. And even if the costs of wind and solar energy have dropped, it is not certain that governments will approve the extensive infrastructure development that the world will require. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to drop your feedback in the comments below, and we'll see you soon.